Hi, it's Super Moon Tara here, back at it again with another pick a card. Today we are going to be answering the question, what are your hidden talents? <laughs> yes, we all have them. But unfortunately, most of the time, we are not even aware of what we are capable of. Or, may I add, more importantly, when we challenge ourselves to do something, we might succeed at. And so we end up missing out on um, the most out of life or using what we have to our benefit. And I, I want you guys to succeed. I want you to have all the kind of help and uh, upper hands and uh, support you can get. So we're gonna be going over all your untapped potential, your abilities, your talents, all that good jazz. Pick whatever group resonates with you most. Go with your gut. We've got group number one, two, three, and four. The timestamps for all of these groups are down below in the description. Let's get started with group number one. Group number one, let's answer the question, what are your hidden talents? Your first card is, oh my god, king of swords upright. That's it, that's done. We don't need to go over anything else. <laughs> This is an awesome card to get. This talks about your intelligence. You're very smart. But I think we can all agree that when it comes to the po human population as a whole, a lot of people are a lot more intelligent than maybe society gives them credit for because there's different ways of being smart. But your way of being smart is just, I don't know how to express this. It, it will benefit you more universally in more situations than the average person's way of accumulating knowledge and executing ideas. So this is somebody, this by the way, this would be like a lawyer, um, a scientist, a writer, because this is somebody who when they look at a situation or maybe an object, they are thinking of all the possible outcomes the meanings, just the general possibilities. There's a very analytical looking at the whole thing. They don't just go with their first gut decision. They're very aware of um, the different possibilities for something. But then here is the kind of the killer, the thing that sets you apart. In addition to that analytical way of observing the world, you were then able to make decisions way faster than your peers and more decisively with proof, knowing that you have made the best decision. So no one can basically keep up because you're smarter than them, you make decisions faster than them, but you don't make them recklessly. So yeah, you, you should really consider challenging yourself more, especially in the career uh, or workforce, or I mean, it's the same thing, career workforce, because you, you're not, if you're not doing that already, you really need to use that to your advantage. Card. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear, oh, well, I'm not sure. I... Nope, I don't want to hear any lack of confidence coming from you. Knight of Pentacles paired with the King of Swords. I'm telling you this right now before I go into any of the cards is if you would like to earn more money, a lot of the time those type of positions are more high risk lots more of responsibility. They ask a lot more of your brain and energy levels than your average job. And uh, a lot of people can feel intimidated by that, understandably, and don't wanna kind of take on that. You can. You really can if you wanna do it. I really think you should consider pushing yourself in that degree, because you definitely have the ability. So, Knight of Pentacles. The reason why Knight of Pentacles is so special here, especially being paired with the King of Swords. So you're, we already know you're smart and you make decisions quickly, but in the Knight of Pentacles, this talks about being really hardworking. Now, yeah, that for right then and there, that, that's enough to say, oh cool, I'm a hard worker and I'm smart, but this is somebody who doesn't burn out. You're very steady with your hard work. People don't last as long as you can and you'll just keep going and going and going. So in, in already standing out, 
like if you were at the office, people would be like, oh, they're the smartest one. Um, they stand out because I hear their decisions first and that's usually the right decision. As everyone else gets tired and needs to go to lunch or they need a vacation, you can just keep going and going and going. But then this is where it gets, again, the way you were intelligent analytically and you were smart. In addition to being a hard worker and being really steady, you're very practical. You have this way of using your resources and skills around you to the fullest in a way others won't. So you're kind of like unstoppable because you can be given nothing and make something out of nothing. And because within addition to your actual skills of being able to do that with your hands, and think of hands referring to anything, like this can refer to it like a computer type job as well. Um, it doesn't have to be just like carpentry or like working with your hands that way. You know you've weighed all the possible decisions and outcomes. So there's practical and all the possibilities being weighed. So pre pretty, pretty stellar. Now we have, ooh, Nine of Cups. Okay, Nine of Cups upright. Uh, this refers to yourself um, as being very sensual. Uh, this is somebody who's very romantic, but the difference is a lot of people get the lover's card and they just assume romance. Yes, it's about romance completely, but the lover's card is more talking about romance within two people and how you're interacting, there's a lot of equality in that type of card. The Knight of Cups Upright talks about your individual skills and abilities when it comes to anticipating and properly executing other people's needs in a romantic fashion. You know how to charm. You know what they need to feel or experience that both benefits you and your partner. There's just something about you. <laughs> this is a very, very, very positive card, which I love that. But something in addition to um, being very romantic and sensual in this way is you wear your heart on your sleeve, which it's like you kind of... You kind of have it all, essentially. You're smart, you're very practical and hardworking, but you're not closed off. Um, if you ever feel a little insecure about being so vulnerable and open, please don't be. It's, uh, it really will, it can be good and bad with who you attract, um, because a lot of people are drawn to those sort of open-ended, uh, or not open-ended, like open-minded sort of people. People love that sort of vulnerability, being really honest, being really open and sharing. But, uh, either way, if you ever feel you're a little too open, please don't be. It's a positive thing, and it will allow there to be more positive relationships, uh, whether it be romantic or friendship-wise. It's good to let people know what you're thinking, especially with being so smart. It will let people know, oh, I want to be on their team. Oh, I'm clearly upsetting them. I really don't want to upset them because I want to be on their team. They have a lot to offer. But uh, a lot to offer both emotionally and practical. I don't want to make it seem like you're just someone to be used. <laughs> I just, man, I feel like I am just in sync today with this reading. The lovers, upright. Again, this refers to romance, but something really beautiful about this card is this one, this talks about how you're great at keeping promises. Man, you are like a catch so far in this reading. I'm, I'm taken, but if I wasn't, you sound amazing. Uh, this talks about somebody who is great at keeping promises. Some people can depend on you. And you really kind of take everybody's needs into account. You are aware that if you benefit them, they can benefit you and vice versa. There's a lot of equality when it comes to the way you approach relationships, both romantic and friendship wise, which not only makes things more, um, a lot of people think that they're winning if they are somehow dominating or controlling a situation. And a lot of people miss out on the absolute joys in life when it comes to turning to your partner, totally respecting their opinions and decisions the way you do, and then getting to then not have them be the higher up, like, like they're your mentor, but then have them reciprocate that. So when they respect and appreciate what you have to say, you appreciate it that much more because you appreciate their opinion. So really, really, really beautiful. Whoa, three of cups. We just talked. Okay, so three of cups in reverse is really interesting because nine of cups, I said that sometimes it can be a good or bad thing to wear on your heart, uh, on your sleeve. Not bad as in it's negative that you show your emotions in that way it's more that because everybody is drawn to that type of personality they love that vulnerability and emotional openness you can sometimes attract 
not great people. And the Three of Cups is really awesome because you are able to spot those shallow people. You're safe. You're good to go. You know when it's not, um, it's not a good thing. You're that person before everyone else that goes, I don't like them. And they go, oh, you're being judgmental. You don't like them. You don't even know them. You know. You know, you don't need a lot of evidence. You know who are the good and bad people. And if you're ever in your life wondering if you're surrounded by people and how did you get there, be a little more, um, be aware that you are, because you are gifted and being able to see them and see what is being uh, is around you, cut them out. Just get rid of them. You can attract a lot of other people. You have a lot more to benefit others. You don't need them in your life. But this is a, a really beautiful, amazing skill to have. Ace of Cups upright. Okay, so Ace of Cups upright, um, yes, is about uh, uh, compassion, being really open. That gets um, repeated often or a lot. But the thing that I love about the Ace of Cups in your skills and abilities right now is you have this secret talent in being able to have, you know, a sense of gratitude and general fulfillment wherever you are, whether it be in relationships or at work, you are a glass half full sort of person. And the reason why this is so special is when you are manifesting things in life, if you tell the universe, I've got all this stuff, I always have all these things around me, I always have uh, what I want out of life, the universe will give that to you. Hone into your gratitude. You're good at it. It comes easily to you ask for more because you see that you get more and you always have it around you, hone into that. Let the universe give you even more. <laughs> Six of cup upright. Man, you are just a very giving person. You are very giving, very open. It's interesting because I do think you can be intelligent and also emotional, but it isn't uncommon for people to be a little closed off or shyer. Um, or, you know, feel that they don't have things to give if they're really honed into more of their, like, working side of their personality. But you, you really have it all. You're very emotional. You're very giving. Um, you're very smart. You work hard. I mean, like I said before, you are definitely a catch. But um, the Six of Cups, uh, in particular, besides just referring to, you know, giving, you can see here, is your uh, ability to being, and this is a key word here, open to being taught as well as teaching others. Like I said, you're giving. You you are happy to share that information and spread it and make the world a better place. But I'm really focusing more on your your abilities and how you can use it to your advantage. So because there's not any ego behind you and you are never afraid of learning more um, and you're very open to it, you need to take advantage of it. You're smart as heck. You'll work hard for it. Start to stretch your mind and your limit and your abilities more than you know. Uh, this would be, um, go learn a language. Remember, this doesn't have to restrict yourself to just college. Uh, go learn an instrument. Whatever it is, keep stretching your abilities because you are very receptive to it and you don't have a problem like looking silly or unknowledgeable in subjects. You're, you're always, you're, you're, you want to hear what other people have to say. So there's never a wall or an obstacle you're putting in your path. If you aren't doing that now, do it now. I don't care if you're a mom with two kids and you don't have time, get books on tape, something. You are incredibly smart. You are not using your intellect and your openness to learn more to your fullest you are completely, you are above average in this department. Do it. Go further in life. Enjoy your life. Whether it be receiving financial benefits for life or being mentally stimulated. You definitely are someone who likes to be stimulated both, you know, through physical body and touch, but also your brain. You're very smart in that way. Okay, next card. Wow, you are a very uh, sensual and romantic person. Because um, <laughs> we had the Knight of Cups under here, the Lovers, now the Strength card, which definitely refers to bedroom activities. Um, but I actually want to hone into something a little bit different here, because we already talked about the whole sensuality thing. Um, strength card upright in this department talks about harmony in mind, body, and spirit. What's so beautiful about that is if you ever feel off, you need to be aware of that if you challenged yourself, you can get in sync with your spirit, your body, 
and having control of, you know, like anxiety and things in your brain all at once more than the average person. Some people can't mentally conceive that. They try, maybe they just work on, or they can only handle one thing at a time. They just work on the mental anxieties. Or they're feeling depressed, they only hone into the depression. It's really hard to do everything all at once. But you, if you challenge yourself, you can do it. You have a lot more, man, you just have such an ability to handle life when it comes to taking charge in the bedroom, taking charge in the workforce, ch taking charge in yourself, in your knowledge and your abilities or the way you handle friends. You're very, you will have a lot of power. But something I want to note here, the Ace of Cups talking about manifestation and strength. So I'm going to give you a little secret. Um, the way I'm able to manifest things very easily is when I'm completely in sync with myself. I am totally sound body and mind like this. I'm thinking very great, uh, have a lot of gratitude, a lot of positivity towards the world. You're kind of like totally in flow with like the energies and the magic of the universe. And being able to ask for what you want with such confidence and the confidence of knowing it's gonna happen, you will be shocked out how fast and the high percent rate you will receive things. Your ability to manifest through these means you, you really should take advantage of this. You it, it comes a lot more naturally to you than it does others, and I think you should really hone into that. There's something really special here. Okay, so let's look. Oh, Five of Swords in Reverse. That's so interesting, it's right next to the Three of Cups. Um, this is really beautiful. It just talks about your ability to accept uh, when things don't go you know, your way and move on. I know that seems small and dumb and might seem obvious to you, but some people get really hung up on things. And I don't blame anybody, I've definitely been there. Sometimes things just really hurt you or rub you the wrong way. But you are able to just be like, you know what, I'm gonna let it go. And because you do, you never bring that into other relationships. You don't take your stuff out on other people. You don't. You never limit the possible potential of things with past hurts which is, does not get expressed enough in society, but is really important skill to have. And your last card, <gasps> Page of Swords. Man, you've had so many swords and cups in this. You are just a very smart and emotional person, which is just such a, which is such a tr uh, treat. And again, this is just so weird that these are lining up because remember shallow friends, accept it because you maybe have sh shallow friends you're accepting that they're not great and you move on and you don't bring it um, into other relationships but with the page of swords upright this refers to sticking up for yourself um you just don't you 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 underestimate that when you if you went up and you went i'm not going to take this anymore you will get it done more efficiently and be taken more seriously than the average person that's not something to joke about. You can really be more in control of a situation than you're aware of and can prevent a lot of grief from happening. So, man, you are pretty, <laughs> you're pretty cool. <laughs> I really like you. Uh, you're pretty well-rounded as a person. You have a lot of traits I would be interested in as a friend or a partner myself, so, but that's just my two cents. Um, I hope you enjoyed this reading as much as I enjoyed giving it. Let's uh, consider giving it this uh, video a like and a subscribe. It helps out the channel like you would not believe. It means the world to me. But either way, I hope you have a lovely day. I am wishing you the best. Now let's get ready for group number two. Group number two. Let's figure out what are your hidden talents. Okay, your first card is the Hierophant in reverse. Okay, um, when it comes to education, acquiring knowledge, and relationships, specifically romantic, you have a way about going it. Uh, you you go about it in your own way. <laughs> Very David S. Pumpkins. Uh, because the best way I can put it is, as a human species, as a whole, everybody included, we are constantly evolving. Back in the day, it used to be every couple thousand years, then it became every couple hundred, then decades. Now it's every six months. We grow and learn and change faster than ever, but unfortunately our traditional forms of education cannot keep up with us giving the knowledge that we need, re retain it longer, and you know, you want to be able to build upon that knowledge. You, you're a builder. This is really beautiful. So 
you're somebody who reaches for a YouTube video over a book. By the way, I'm not saying you don't read or you shouldn't read. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you want to be able to understand a multitude of ways of approaching a task at hand, understand multiple perspectives. So you have such a unique way of going about obtaining this knowledge that when you go to share it, by people associating themselves with you and your knowledge, you're evolving everybody as a whole, whether you mean to or not. This also includes relationships. When you're with someone romantic, they're like, man, I have never experienced life or been loved the way you do. There's a very adventurous quality to you, um, which is a beautiful strength. This basically says, just keep doing it. Just keep going about it. It's totally um, next level. You're kind of ahead of the curve. Just keep going with it. There's just nothing but benefits. Spirit's telling me you already are very aware of this. Three of cups in reverse. Okay, so this refers to your ability to know when someone just isn't a good person. Um, you're someone who goes, I know for a fact this relationship's only going to um, last six months. You have shallow values. You're not a good person. I can see right through you. The, you're the person that's able to go, oh, I don't like blank. <laughs> and everyone's like, what are you talking about? You barely know them. And you're like, no, I know. I know what their deal is. I'm not having it. So... This, both of these are very, like, anti-wasting time. You're very efficient, I can tell. And something that comes with efficiency is the ability to know when something is a waste or a better and better way of approaching a situation. This definitely goes back to the Hierophant Reverse, which talks about you're open-minded enough to understand that when you, the best way to solve something might not be the first thing that comes to mind. It might be a little weird, but that's a good thing. Your next skill or talent. Ooh, girl, you can keep a secret. <laughs> you can keep a secret. But this sounds like a weird ability to have. You know, it definitely sh uh, shows that you are definitely trustful. But this is more, we're talking more tactical. So you're somebody who is able to be trustworthy enough because everyone knows you can keep a secret and people feel they want to tell you their secrets. That's an important thing to note. So this then enables you to avoid confrontation. Again, repeating the concept of not wanting to waste time with drama. We talked about the drama with friends. We talked about uh, wasting inefficient way of learning. And this talks about not wanting to get caught up in other people's stuff or just like, you know, when someone is just, a you know, causing havoc for everyone, you know how to kind of duck and weave behind that and not have to deal with that, which is great. Because you're someone who, I don't want to use the term shadow king, because <laughs> that's a little more dis, uh, devious in nature, and that's not at all how I would describe you. This is just somebody who I would describe as a secret leader. Um, everybody feels that they can tell you what's going on, and nobody knows that the, everybody else is telling you that thing. So you're the person in the family or the friend group who knows everybody else's shtick. And people will say that the truth is one side, the other side, and somewhere in between. You, you're the in between, you're that side, you're that side, you have everybody's perspective. And you're able to then understand, oh, I heard from this person and this person, you know, this person isn't trustworthy. I'll make note to not deal with what they have to say. Or now that I have enough insight, I can tell this person's coming from a place of insecurity. I definitely don't want to get caught up in that storm or take what they have to say too to heart, if that makes sense. So definitely um, very secretive leader, but definitely either way, there's a way of understanding how to use things to your benefit with uh, with secretive knowledge. Again, not against people, just um, understanding the situation as a whole. Ace of Pentacles up for some, up, blah, blah, blah. Ace of Pentacles upright. This refers to your resourcefulness. Now, the best way I would describe this particular type of resourcefulness is like glass half full kind of thing. We can give a metaphor that there's this island and you're on the island. And instead of worrying about what seeds or plants you don't have, you're going to be like, I might not have trees, but I've got bamboo. I can still build things out of bamboo or use bamboo as a resource. 
you don't need to go outside of where you're at to see all of its potential and use it and tend it to your advantage. Um, this talks also talks about you being a very grounded person, which is really important because this already is giving me a vibe of like adventure. And when it comes to that, you, you know, you need to feel like you're centered enough to be able to handle it. Um, can I pull some more cards though? If I, if I don't know if I want to go into that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I did I not just say adventure? Did I not just say adventure? Okay, so Knight of Wands upright definitely refers to adventure. Um, you're a very adventurous person, but what this specifically entails when it comes to a hidden uh, talent or ability, and this is going to be a weird one to say, but a lot of people find strength in being in a cultivated set environment. Right? Not unlike the Ace of Pentacles, talking about your own island. Think of your own home. And if you've got your own place to be, you can kind of come back there, reset, feel calm, and, and whatever. Many people describe feeling burnt out or having nothing left to give when it comes to moving around too much, you know, too much travel. You're fine. You adapt well. You kind of thrive in adventure. And, um, kind of trying out new things. This again talks about being grounded and why I refer to the Hierophant um, in reverse, which is underneath this card, and the Knight of Wands upright. When you're this sort of adventurous, um, you need to be able to be like your version of home or feeling like you can rejuvenate is within yourself, which is kind of like amazing. You're, you don't need anything else but yourself. So this then enables you to go out and experience it more in life than maybe more other people have the energy to or the bravery to. This definitely has a lot of bravery to it, which is really beautiful. Like you should definitely test your limits and abilities when it comes to going out and trying new things because you'll be able to handle it better than others, which is really um, gorgeous. You're, it's not going to hurt your stress levels. You'll be fine. You can totally handle it. Um, that's something to know. Some people thrive better when they're, you know, isolated and they're alone and they don't want to experience new things. Neither is a necessarily more good or bad thing, but because that seems like a very obvious strength for you, go for it. Handle it. But another thing that's really important about the um, Knight of Wands uh, upright is it talks about you understanding when it comes to a situation, you're like, I understand what needs to get done. And then you're able to express that to others to be like, again, this talks about secret leader. I talked about secret leader here. So people can come to you and you'll go, don't worry. I know what needs to get done. You do this, um, you do this, but then more importantly, I do this. There isn't a lack of not wanting to be involved with everyone else. So you definitely, again, this gives you traits of being uh, somebody who everybody can depend on, but also kind of respect. So again, you're, you seem to really draw a lot of people to you without having to do much. It's like, while you're living your best life, and just be continuing to be more and more um, intelligent and have fun through the ways of your learning and how you're learning it in relationships and you're experiencing lots of adventure, you're getting rid of the people that aren't fun, you're understanding um, everybody's side secretly so no one knows what you do or don't know, you have to be caught up in any drama and avoid that, you're able to handle it well and then get people out there to do the best. It's like, it's like you're, there's, there's an unintentional giving quality to you, which is really beautiful. Oh my, that's so weird. Um, Six of Wands Upright. It talks about being a leader for sure, but honestly, from what I can tell here with this little sneaky guy, you know, pulling back and the Knight of Wands wanting nothing to do with that, this sort of leadership role, for, this is kind of like a side tangent from skills and whatever, this is more of a future prospect. You're going to be a leader in the long term of life. You have way too many skills and benefits. You're going to be one of those people that are elected by the people. You're going to have so many people that want you to be the head of the household, head of the workforce. And you're going to kind of be in the long term of life thrust in that position because right now so many people value your opinion and what you have to offer. But that's just not where you want to be right now. You want to be someone that helps people 
and does it secretively but without the responsibility of only being because a lot of the time when you're a leader it's like that's where you have to stay you can't really have the frivolity and the fun that is somebody who's a little more adventurous you also like to get down and dirty and want to be there with other people building the project making things happen so you don't want to be kind of like you know caught up in all of this quite yet but um with the uh uh sorry six of wands upright the, we want to more focus on the fact that this is somebody who is very visionary, like the Knight of Wands. You're able to see the concept as a whole than other people, which is really beautiful. But this more specifically talks about your skills. Again, there's just so much like tangible knowledge and skill work happening here, which is really cool. So you're able to be, uh, let's say you know how to paint, right? But you understand the project as a whole and what it could be like you can envision it in your head already at the end better than other people you can see all the potential and endpoints before other people can and then because you have the skills to back it up you can make it happen yourself so there's a lot of again independence it's like i can see why a lot of people are drawn to you it's you're everything what people want. You have the vision, but they respect that you'll do it yourself. I'm just getting such a strong. I know this is just general hidden talents, but, I, but I'm telling you right now, you have a lot of um, people's attention. People are drawn to you when they get to know you. I'm telling you right now, definitely be confident in yourself. Yeah, interesting. See, this is why I knew you were not going to be a leader yet, but it's kind of like naturally in you. Um, the Empress, this often refers to mothering, um, but I wouldn't describe you as a mother. This more talks about the ability to anticipate other people's needs and then give that to them. So this is just like, like you kind of just, it's less, <laughs> I'm not saying you're not caring, you are, but I wouldn't describe you as someone that, that's like the forefront of your mind to be caring. It's just that you'll look over, see a problem, understand what needs to be done, and then be like, oh, do you need this? Here you go. You just don't hesitate. You don't think about it. You just do it. You execute it. You don't need to talk about it. Move on. But you could, you don't understand, a lot of people could not get involved with that. Again, this always feels like you're secretively, without being aware of it or intending it, building a long-term uh, line of connections, like ability from the masses. Please understand out of all these select skills that just benefit you in your ability to get tasks done and get the most enjoyment out of life, I just it is entirely weird to me in a good way how much it just keeps popping up about you being a secret leader. I think you need to understand that in the long term uh, life, when especially when it comes to career, as you keep just being yourself and having these traits you naturally have, you're going to be shook that when you want to take advantage of an opportunity, nothing will bring you down. People will always be on your side. They will always respect you, but also um, respect your abilities and uh, being involved. But they're going to see how smart you are. They're going to want to hear your creative way of approaching the situation. You're, you're going to be visionary in the long term, but you're going to be unmovable from your position from the general mass, like the mass isn't liking you. And you're also going to always have this long line of connection and networking of people to be like, oh, can you help me? Can you give me a favor? Can you give me this position? Before you know it, like, in th th this to me is like, oh, go have fun, have a good time in life. But uh, little do you know, you are building a platform like no other. Use it to your advantage in the long term. You really underestimate the people out of the woodwork that would, like, do anything for you. Um, yeah, it's really crazy. The devil in reverse. Transformative. Yeah, I'm really starting to wonder if in the long term in life you're going to be some sort of a performer. This makes me think about drag queens specifically, but obviously when I say performer I'm referring to anyone. Like a good example would be Beyonce. Um, because the devil in reverse talks about being able to transform with ease. Uh, think about how Beyonce and many other celebrities uh, are forced to and have thrived because of their ability to stay up to date, stay new, stay uh, you you you're totally okay with change. You're definitely inventive and visionary with the way you approach things. Like we talked about the hierophant. Um, 
definitely enjoy the ability to transform, but understand how whether you are a performer or you're in any sort of line of work or friendship, you're going to really not only get the most out of life and get the joy and permission from others societally to, like, sometimes people don't want someone to change. They'll always bring up your past. Not you. They will fully accept what you have to change. So definitely take advantage of that out of, like, the enjoyment of life. But it's the thing that's always going to make you, like, I just don't see you ever falling out of, with a multitude of reasons, falling out of favor with just generally humans you interact with. That's something really important you need to take advantage of. It's kind of like you can do no wrong. And you are also given the most amount of freedom and respect. I don't... Damn, you are powerful. And you aren't even lifting a finger. I really think you need to just get out there. Because damn, you're powerful. Queen of Pentacles. Damn, there's that resourcefulness coming up again. Um, Queen of Pentacles, uh, upright, talks about the ability to create something out of nothing. Again, being transformative but not needing to rely on, again, we talked about resources and you can use what you have, but this also is referred to as like a manifestation card. So you definitely do have the ability to make whatever you want to become a reality. But the beautiful thing is this isn't just the manifestation card from your mind and being like, if I want it and put it out there, I'll receive it. I mean, you can literally make it happen from limited resources to any way you can ground any sort of information or connection with other people no matter what it is that man you are you, damn you are unstoppable this is so this is really cool this is sorry i'm getting very excited i sometimes uh uh spirit will make me feel the intensity of your energy and i'm getting it really like intensely so i'm becoming more and more energetic as i experience your skills and um personality Five of Wands in reverse. Damn. Damn. Damn, you're powerful. Uh, this just pretty much talks about, uh, again, when we talk about how everybody is kind of on your side in favoritism, just by living your best life and enjoying life the way you want to, you're building connections, skills, learning at a fast rate, experiencing relationships and life in a way others aren't. This again talks about lack of wasting energy. If you ever get a gut feeling about friends or something like that or projects, get out of there. You can sense it. Sense it? But this is a huge one. This talks about preventing others from sucking your energy out of you. This is knowing when something is a waste. You have no ego when you're like, you know what, I can tell we're fighting. This isn't working. Who gives a damn? I'm moving on. I don't care about losing or seeing it as losing. I'm seeing myself getting out of a situation. So even if you do have to deal with confrontation, we talked about seven of wands, you avoiding confrontation. You you just don't, there's no ego behind you. You're like, yep, I don't care. I'm out of here. Damn, you are so cool. You are so powerful. You like cannot go wrong. There is no... The world is your oyster, and all you have to do is enjoy it. So, damn. That is so cool. Anyways, <laughs> as you can tell, I enjoyed reading this. And please consider giving it a like if you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed giving it. And subscribe to the channel. It helps out like you would not believe. But either way, guys, I am wishing you the best. <laughs> Sorry for the shaky camera. And let's get ready for group number three. Group number three. Let's answer the question, what are your hidden talents? We got first card. Ooh, <laughs> seven of pentacles upright. Patience is the name of the game with you. <laughs> and this is a good thing. You understand the longevity of things and that if you keep working hard over time, you will bear fruits for those rewards. And there's something too important, uh, important to note here that universe and spirit are on your side with this one, which is really unique because not everybody can have success if they keep at it. Unfortunately, you can work very hard for like a year or two on a project and it never become anything. Not you, you're different. So that in itself is a skill and talent and definitely just luck being thrown in your favor. But something too important to note here is why universe that does this. Because yes, it is a talent, 
But the universe and spirit want you to be able to feel confident once things pop off and are moving at a faster rate uh, to know that you've had enough experience you can depend on and that you are knowledgeable enough. So there's a strength in your ability to see the long-term projects. There's patience and there's just general motivation no matter what is kind of happening around you. You're like, don't worry, it's gonna happen. This is the turtle in the hair situation and there is hardcore strength. It's kind of like, because you know that it doesn't matter how long it takes that something's gonna happen, just that you want it to happen, it kind of makes it seem like no matter what gets in your way, doesn't matter. It's gonna happen. You're gonna make it happen. You've got uh, time on your side because it doesn't matter if it takes time and you've got motivation on your side because you know you will see the benefits of it and um, everything is a gift whether it be knowledge or experience so it's you kind of see the bigger picture essentially. <laughs> Did I? Oh my god I am in sync as heck today with the cards. Um, okay, so Six of uh, Wands Upright. This talks about busyness. I just talked about how you gain the skills and experience over time so that once things pop off, you're able to handle it. So this talks about busyness. In, in addition to being really patient, you are able to handle when things get really busy. Now, this is more talking about a work mindset, but it doesn't mean that you aren't successful when it comes to whirlwind romances. Sometimes people become really overwhelmed by it or start overthinking it or or put too much dependency on it too soon. I mean, there's a various things that can go wrong. When, once a relationship starts kind of going very quickly, and that means commitment or even just romance in a bedroom type of situation, you've got it. You're a cool cucumber. You can handle it. You want it. You want to ride that wave. And that is a skill and a talent, honestly. You, it's, it's just like welcoming more into your life and being able to enjoy the benefits of it. Seven of Wands, uh, or I'm sorry, sorry, not Seven of Wands, Seven of Cups in Reverse. Um, okay, so this is a bit trippy. So this is about being able to make your dreams come into flourishing. And the reason why I describe this as trippy is it's not necessarily describing you making your dreams come into reality just because of being able to be very skilled with resources or practicality. There's almost this effect that you can literally reach into your dreams and pull them out of reality. This is coming from a version of magic. This is coming from kind of a psyche, super crazy spiritual level. This is like paying attention to your dreams. And I don't mean just dreams like, oh, I want to make it happen. I mean, like, do you dream about it? Do you physically see it happen? You are going to definitely find a lot of strength when it comes to manifesting through visualization. And you should, when you meditate and you're casting spells or you're asking for something to happen, you want to see it in your mind's eye and focus on it because you have this next level ability to literally pull it out and make it exist in this life. Not because of resources, not because of the way you approached it. You thrust it, you pull it in. You are very strong and powerful on a weird, psyche, cool, dream level way. Temperance! We talked about patience again! That's so funny! But um, temperance is a, like has a different meaning in this connotation. Now, um, a lot of people would describe temperance as the peacekeeper. Um, definitely somebody who's good with moderation. But I want you to take note of something more detailed or specific when it comes to that. This is someone, as you can notice by her cups, that this is someone who understands how to make things work on a balanced level based on the correct proportions in each cup and the mixture of certain combined elements. You are able to better understand, it's almost like, again, this is very much like a, you're able to be in control or take hold and know what other people need, know what to give yourself and so on and so forth. Because you understand that when it comes to balance and success in this kind of way, um, it isn't just simply making compromises. There's a forced hand. There's understanding you need to say and do a little bit of this, you need to say and do a little bit of that. And taking something that is not just simply 
being peaceful and balanced, everything's good and working in harmony. This is specifically saying, I'm going to take this now to the next level. I'm going to elevate this because what is working now isn't working. I'm going to now bring that peace and that balance into the situation, but I'm going to take it to the next level. There's a lot of creation here and understanding everything as a whole to be able to work and mix and make it work. And and also again, this comes in with the patience thing and understanding what needs to happen in certain amounts at certain times and then, you know, bring it in later. So maybe you need to be a little talkative now, be quiet again, be very vocal in leadership, now pull back away. There's a very ebb and a flow and understanding the right timing and combination. Definitely slow down and be a little more observant and use this to your advantage. I think you naturally do this whether you're aware of it or not naturally, but when you can really be aware of that skill and talent and use it to your advantage by taking in all the information as a whole, Oh my gosh, next level blast off with how your environment works to your favor, including co-workers, um, dreams happening, lots of positive beneficial things. Ten of pentacles upright. Okay, so on one hand, uh, we talked about work again and correct proportions. Man, you just have a lot of like synergy about you. This is, I know we haven't gotten a lot of cups. But there's just something very emotional, ebb and flow about the way um, your abilities sort of align, is what I'm going to say. There's a lot of patience and understanding. So in the Ten of Pentacles, this talks about how you can get your work life to positively affect your home life. And I'm going to refer to family, but remember, family does not mean you have to have kids uh, this is just like maybe you and your three cats or you and your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or you and your boyfriend and the dog. It, it can involve kids, but when I say family, that's a broader subject. It's like the idea of a, like a little community you're starting to build. So you're able to use your work life to benef benefit your home life and your home life to benefit your work life. You never are somebody that like brings work home and then everyone has to listen to you and talk about it or you bring that stress home. It's about you learned skills and then you used it to make your partner happy, to make the uh, home life a better situation. Then your partner taught you how to see things from a different perspective and you bring that and you end up having a higher paid position because of their insight. This is a, again, talking about being able to understand the correct proportions and using it to your advantage at the right time. You never really have to separate, you only benefit. Again, I can see why you really benefit from having long-term success. You're always building on top of the other and never seeing it as this mountain of stress, but this mountain of knowledge and benefit. There's only like positive glass half full stuff going on here, which is really awesome. You're, you're very smart and resourceful, I might add. Um, but also, uh, the Ten of Pentacles just talks about this beauty of being able to see magic and wonder and happiness in even the most ordinary things. Um, so that's just like a general life fulfillment sort of uh, happiness daily activity. But another big thing is your ability to create a secure and steady environment, not only for yourself, but for others. Now, yes, other people will be drawn to you and kind of describe you as home and feel very, you know, protected by just being in your company and whatever you create. Like, the environment you create, people want to be in that. But take, um, what's the word? Uh, find benefit in knowing that because you can create a, such a steady, secure homestead, when you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling overwhelmed, Go to your personal space and make it to that next level of nesting. This could be your bedroom, if you only have a bedroom to work with. This can be your whole apartment or house. Make it filled with beautiful decorations, things that make you happy, things that give you comfort, your favorite treats and snacks, because you can do it like no other, and it's going to fill, fulfill you and benefit you and give you the strength and motivation to push through stressful experiences in a way um, that others maybe they need quiet. You need a home. You need a special space, and you're good at it. Your next card is 
four of pentacles in reverse. Interesting. Um, I know I just talked about the idea of security and steadiness and being home, but that does not mean you don't enjoy taking risks. In fact, I'm kind of encouraging you to because when you get the four of pentacles in reverse, this is like the universe saying, if you want to go for it, it's going to work out in your favor. Again, a lot. the universe just really has your back when it comes to things taking a while um, and, and uh, just risk and gambling being involved. I often get a lot of card spreads that tell uh, uh, my private readers, like, don't do that. <laughs> don't take the risk. You're gambling with your personal well-being. But for you, you can do it. I definitely especially encourage that when it comes to the workplace and romance. Like, try it out. Try Take that risk. You're going to benefit from it, and I think you're going to have fun playing and messing with the boundaries of your world. Four of Cups in reverse. Okay, um, this is just beautiful. Um, you let things roll off your shoulders. You don't stay in a bad mood for long. People really like that. They feel drawn to your ability to realize things aren't as big of a deal as they might seem. I'm not saying you don't get upset and emotional or be, you know, have your feathers ruffled once in a while, but you do usually pop out of your own senses or uh, knock yourself out of your own senses every now and then and just go, oh, whoops, what am I doing? This is stupid. Like, you don't need someone to come in and pull you out of it. You can just kind of snap out of it on your own. And I think a lot of people are drawn to that kind of uh, control you have over your life. I mean, you have a lot of control in every which uh, shape which or way, but not control as in um, wanting to control other people, but the ability to make your life and your setting the way you want it when you want it. So this is a lot of like, um, self-employment. This is a lot of like, yes, I'm single, but I'll go find that person I want to have because I know I can make it happen. Um, just a lot of awareness and seeing the bigger picture and being resourceful. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, the star upright. Uh, something that's really beautiful is you just kind of are in the right direction right now in your life. I know that seems like a really weird talent, but you have a natural sense of understanding what is the right move for you to make and when it's not. So again, this goes back to patience. Like, I know we'd all like to have success and the love of our life tomorrow, but you're able to know, you know what? I know everybody else right now is working hard and making a bunch of, let's say you're a YouTuber, they're making a bunch of YouTube uh, videos. But right now, I don't think I'm in the right place for that. So I'm going to step back. And because you stepped back, everyone else got burned out and you learned some new knowledge and got, you know, rejuvenated again. You know what to do. And that's a gift. Not And this is gone goes beyond intuition. This is more being connected to the universe and spirit. Intuition is more like you and independence on you. You're connected to the bigger picture on a spiritual level, which is really cool card is I've been talking about resourcefulness like this whole time um page of pentacles uh again this talks about the beauty of um uh resourcefulness but how do I express this you have the ability to enjoy doing the journey and the work itself when it comes to uh your career or specifically developing some sort of a new skill so this gives you the motivation and the passion when it comes to the longevity of the Seven of Pentacles. But this also talks about your ability and skill at taking a new skill. So a lot of people are like, well, what should I, what should I do? What should I focus on, whether it be a hobby or something to benefit their work or career? You're really good at going, you know what? I just have an inkling. I'm going to learn Italian. And you pick the right thing, and you you don't feel stressed that you don't know Italian within two months, because obviously you wouldn't. Uh, you enjoy the act of learning Italian, and then before you know it, the universe again, your head in the right direction is like, by the way, your job now involves talking to an Italian client, or you run into a lot of Italian people, and this gives you a kind of a higher um, up, and it sees you as more of a, a, a useful um, person to have in the workforce, which gives you that promotion and that next level of. Uh, being used in a benefit, beneficial way. 
So again, this talks about the longevity of how long it takes to learn Italian, the patience to know it's to, to your advantage. But the big thing is just having this weird, inexplainable insight of doing the right thing at the right time and knowing how it will benefit you in the long run, even if you don't know it will benefit you in the long run. And your last card is judgment. Judgment upright. It's so funny we talked about skills right now because this talks about testing those abilities. Now I know that seems like a weird skill to have, but you're just not afraid to show others. Like you don't choke under pressure. And then that, when you're, a, when you're put into that position to be like, listen, let me show you what I got. You then have the confidence to be able to execute it and do the best job possible and then other people are like okay I can trust what they have to offer um, you just don't you know you're given the time like again I keep referring this is like one of the most important parts of the entire spread is your patience and your confidence in your experience and a gained knowledge over time you're not afraid to show it off there's no ego behind this you're just okay to step up to bat Man, you are very chill. <laughs> You're very chill. You're weirdly in tune with the universe. Yeah, you're... Yeah. Wow, so many pentacles. You, I think... I really think whatever um, career you do, you should definitely um, commit to it because you have a very strong homey kind of career long-term path when it comes to going about things with these in particular these are important too but yeah i think whether you know it or not you are meant to have a lot of um you're going to be somebody who is underestimated initially or kind of seen as uh you know oh yeah they're like everyone else and then in 10 years everyone's going to be like oh damn little did i know they were the innovator Little did I know they were someone I should have paid attention to or seen as competition. I think that's definitely another one of your strengths and talents is people don't see you as the competition until it's too late. And you won. You won the competition. You were tested and you won. <laughs> so very, very cool. Definitely um, learn to chill out if you haven't already because you reap a lot of rewards from it. Uh, if you enjoyed this reading as much as I did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. It helps out the channel like you would not believe. Either way, I am wishing you the best, and let's get ready for group number four. Group number four. Let's answer the question, what are your hidden talents? Let's start with your first card. <gasps> Two of Cups. Oh my gosh. Okay, so of course this deals with relationships, of course. Um, but... In a relationship, this specifically talks about your level of balance and equality in a relationship. There's a lot of respect when you approach a situation. You want your partner, and this is a talent and a skill to have because you get more out of relationships than other people. You're able to see them both as someone you respect and you want to know their opinion, but because you treat them with this respect, they want to give it back to you. And you therefore appreciate and respect that they're giving it to you and vice versa. It's this constant back and forth. Think of it like a beautiful cycle, like their hair. And they're constantly feeding and benefiting somebody who then can feed and benefit them. You're going to get a lot more out of relationships than other people because you are down to hear what your partner has to say and you're going to help them bloom. And then that then causes the effect, and this is the beautiful thing, this is not about some giving to someone and them taking from you, it's about them then wanting to give and benefit to you. So really, really, really beautiful when it comes to just general sense of like harmony and balance, lots of like love and peace and chillness. You have a lot of potential success when it comes to relationships, which is awesome. Um, because every, there's no right or wrong when it comes to a relationship, but some relationships are a little out of balance or have a different flow to them. There's just a complete mirroring and syncness. Definitely you have a higher chance to easily identify and hook up with your twin flame for sure. Two of Swords. Okay, so this is really cool. Um, this is not uh, someone who's not hasty. You are for sure someone who is willing to hear, again, this talks about harmony and balance. Uh, you're down to hear both sides of the story. 
and you want to evaluate both sides of the story before you make a decision. You're not someone that just hears something and goes, oh, you're right, they're wrong. You want to be like, well, what's their side of the coin? There's kind of like a devil's advocate type of situation going on here, which enables you to not only make better choices, but make sounder decisions. So you're pretty mature from the looks of it, which is cool. Not oh my gosh, Nine of Cups. This is like one of my OG favorite cards. I don't know why I don't hear more tarot readers going, you know, ham over this card. Yes, we all want to hear about our romances and the lovers card and the Two of Cups and all that positive stuff. But Nine of Cups are a different story because Nine of Cups is about getting exactly what you want, a hundred percent. But the beautiful thing about this being a talent is more about your in syncness with spirit in the universe. If you ask for it and you can't put any connotation in the back, you can't say doubt yourself, you can't say, well, I guess I'll settle for this. No, demand it because you will receive it, whatever you want. People will go, that's not realistic or that's never been done before. You can make it happen. There's just something really, I don't know, luck being in your favor, spirit really being on your side, whatever it is, you are like karmically like in good, you know, swing of things essentially, and you should go for it because you can make it happen. That's why I was talking about when it comes to, and oh man, this just totally makes sense with twin flame type of stuff, because yes, romance can come to everybody, but we might not always get the sort of romance we would like. And I think most of us love our partners, but there are many times when it's like, well, I love them, but this drives me crazy or something like this. You can exa ask for exactly what you want. You can ask for somebody who's a very, you know, showman type of person, but they're also very humble. Ask for it. Go for it. Go for the impossible. You're going to get it. <laughs> seven of Wands. Okay, Seven of Wands. Upright. This is really cool. This is about you... Um, taking a hold of any sort of idea or project but with a lot of strength and bravery that's something to really take note of this really goes into talking about how your hidden talent is you have a greater capability and depth for when it comes to being strong and brave and heading on uh taking on confrontation head on way more than you know this is about somebody who is able to see how do I put this sorry um sorry I'm losing my train of thought uh sorry spirit is being really loud right now sometimes spirit just like fully grabs my attention in a reading and I kind of like zone out for a second listening to it um sorry spirit's very intense about you knowing needing to know about your bravery and strength uh it, it just talks about the idea that so if there's something that needs to be handled you're going to handle it. You're going to make it happen. You are much more capable than you know, and you're not afraid of making it happen. If you ever find some sort of a reluctance of like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I want to deal with all that drama, go for it. If you feel it is important and that you, it needs to get done, you're the one to make it happen and get it done. And your success rate will be a lot higher than others. You will not be intimidated. People will sense that and they will back down way easier than other people that are handling the same exact thing. This also talks about your skills to know when to pick a battle. Because again, I'm not talking about going into every drama or confrontation or difficult project, you know, just like rambunctiously. It's about knowing what is the most productive ones to include yourself in. I mean, talk about productive decision making, productive project picking is the best way I can put it. Okay. Seven of Pentacles. You're a very, you're just like whether, wow, you are just a very thoughtful person. Yes, there is, um, it's not so much about generosity, not that I'm saying you're not. It's more about your understanding and your consideration and equality when it comes to things. Seven of Pentacles talks about you being able to see the bigger prop, um, picture. This gets repeated in relationships, this gets repeated in ideas, this gets repeated in the Seven of Wands when it comes to battles, and you understand the idea of hard work and its longevity knowing that if you work hard over time, you will see the benefits and the, reap the rewards for it. 
unlike some people who can give up more easily, you don't. Again, this goes back to strength and bravery. You can last a lot longer than other people while others burn out. You're going to stay, you're going to keep going. Wow, this makes sense now with the Nine of Cups. Pay attention to your dreams. There is something like psychic going on there. This is a, uh, this definitely is pointing to, you have, um, so psychicness, everyone's potentially capable of it. It's just about how you tap into it and, and what you have. Some people can hear through psychicness. Some people can see through psychicness. Some people can feel through psychicness. You can see it. Um, and specifically see it in your dreams. There, when you're at your most restful and calm state, you're not um, distracted, you can see it. Um, this also talks about your potential ability for astral projection. You might want to look into that. Astral projection is very beneficial. I could go on and on and on about it. It's all about how you can see other people, different dimensions. You can experience things you've never experienced. It, it have a whole different understanding. It it can go many, 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 many levels when it comes to it. And uh, you definitely have a leg up on other people. Death card upright. This is kind of a unique and weird skill to have. But... One of those skills people don't talk about enough that can be more beneficial than people know. So yes, you will work on something over a longer period of time and have the patience and uh, bigger understanding of what's going on and how it can benefit you. But you also understand when things aren't going to happen, that they're, they're, ne they're, ne they're naturally ending. You're someone who doesn't, isn't going to get hooked up on a relationship and keep going on and on, going, maybe it'll work out, maybe it'll work out. You go, nope. I, I can see when this relationship is ended. I'm going to walk away and stop wasting my time. Or, you know what? I know I've been working on this project, but I can now see that it's not going to work. There's a lot of acceptance in it, which is really beautiful and mature again. Again, you're very, very, very mature. But there's also a lack of wasting time without... Um, it's a different sort of wasting time. Some people know how to like trim the fat and see it before. But you can't always see when things change, you know, this talks about like fate and how sometimes things are were working out and then something dramatic happened and it, it stopped working out, it changed. You're able to then take the bigger hand and go, it doesn't matter, or not the bigger hand, you're be, able to be the bigger person and go, you know what, I know we've put a lot of hard work in this and heart, yeah I've been fighting a lot but I, I think I know when to walk away and it's the right thing to do. Queen of Cups. This makes total sense with the Death card. This talks about being able to go with the flow. Now, if you feel that you're not someone to go with the flow, remember, this is about hidden talents. You're more capable of it than you are aware of. So, when you sit back, you need to start to learn that you can trust yourself and trust that the universe is working more in your favor than you know. I mean, the Nine of Cups, man. If you need uh, some, if you need like a good karmic and just general spirit and the universe being on your side, you couldn't get a better card. And the Queen of Cups says, sit back. You'll know when to relax, when to engage. You know when to pick your battle. You'll know how to weigh decisions, but just fully engross yourself with being in the moment. This card also talks about in addition to that, being able to know and have the capabilities of like taking all your energy, all your passion, and putting it into something you believe in. Talks about, again, the Nine of Cups and just making things happen if you want it to happen. But something that's really beautiful about this is your ability to make things happen through your emotion, to get other people, in, in addition, motivated to complete the same task at hand. Like, definitely, you're going to have a lot of managers or bosses that want to get you in. If you ever find them kind of, like, really trying to neg on you to get involved in a project, it's because they're like, if I can get them to be in it and be all gusto-y about this... I know everybody else will follow because they will be motivated and energized by your energy and passion, which is really beautiful. Use your emotions and your psychic awareness and your connection to the universe more to your advantage than you're aware of. Like, definitely don't just, it's not going to work if it's just like anything willy-nilly, but figure out what you're passionate about. Put your heart into it because you're going to make it happen and get others to be as just as interested in it as you. You're the person that like starts painting 
and then you're like oh my god guys I did this painting and people want to buy your paintings because you're like oh my god she did this painting I'm, I'm totally engrossed in her spirit and what she has to offer the world oh this is a really unique cool um sort of skill to have so this is two different um interpretations both are valid for you one this uh the world is a very expanding sort of card and when it comes to expansion it talks about how you're able to make even the smallest environments feel that big this is a magical quality that alerts people to you it's almost like a weird illusionary trick you're not tricking anyone it's like you're able to show the complexity and the depth of even a small town and show all it has to offer and therefore widening people's small tunnel vision or keyhole perspective of a small place. You're able to see, it's not just about being able to see the bigger picture, you want to and you can connect with and you're always reaching outside of a smaller space and making the environment feel bigger and bigger, whether it's the world as a whole and understand how other humans interact and are there with you and others, or just like I said, a hometown feeling a lot bigger than it is. Definitely go out there and experience adventures, see what things have to offer, because you're more in tune with being able to find it, have that perspective, and share it with others than you know. So this will both benefit you and make you feel like everywhere you go is an adventure, and feel more insightful and wiser from your knowledge you gain, but it's just like a great skill people will feel like magnetized to you for. And your last card is... Ace of Cups upright. Okay, um, you're just a very honest person. This talks about the same thing in the Two of Swords we talked about before, weighing all the decisions, making the best possible choice. You're honest, but you definitely choose with compassion, again, like we talked about in the Two of Swords. Um, but the big thing I want you to take from with the uh, Ace of Cups upright is just your ability and your kind of glass half full perspective when it comes to both your career and relationships. There is a beauty in being able to appreciate and have gratitude for what you have, but pay close attention to that with the Nine of Cups upright. Your power of manifestation is your ability to have gratitude, but it's not gratitude that says, well, I'm just so thankful, at least I have this. It's the gratitude to understand that, yes, I have this. I have so much. I always receive so much because everywhere I see, there's something beneficial for me, so therefore as I keep receiving things, of course everything's going to be beneficial. Use that to your advantage. It's not only beautiful and a fun perspective to have in life and feel more fulfillment, but you can use it to your advantage to create the world you want around you. So, man, I like, I, I don't know if you ever noticed, but you'll notice my mood dramatically shift with, um, as I read spreads because I will feel it and like spirit makes me feel you and the personalities through the or the situations through the tarot very intensely and um, depending on the intensity of the situation in person uh, I'll respond accordingly and you were just so like I feel very safe with you I feel very level-headed with you I feel very relaxed and trusting with you there's a lot of like stability and logic and love and, and and equality as I mentioned before and I'm just like really it's a really great way to end this video because I just feel very chilled out for the day so thank you for that thank you for sending me that energy <laughs> and I hope I'm in turn sending it back to you but either way guys I hope you enjoyed this re reading and would consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel it helps out like you would not believe and I hope you enjoy this reading as much as I did Either way, I am wishing you the best and sending you lots of love. See you in the next one.